Hi guys, this is a 2.5 kilowatts, 220 volts, 50 hertz rated generator stator coil. So this coil has a fault. Um, the exciter is visibly burnt. So, but from the explanations of my mechanic friend who gave me the coil, I recommended rewinding both the exciter and the armature as well so the armature isn't visibly burnt but what is visibly burnt is the exciter so as you move on we're going to find out the faults with the armature as well so um this is the coil we can see the um, exciter layer that is clearly burnt it is clearly burnt so um, we're going to be rewinding this in this video. Um, I've made a previous video where, where I explained the whole connection of this type of generator coil. So um, we already know what exciter means and um, what it does. So if we don't know this, um, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video for you to watch that very video so that you can understand the connection properly so these yellow um, wires they are the exciter wire so these two yellow wires are the is a kind of extension of the bond layer of coil i just showed us so i'm just going to lose this out and then remove the bond part then we prepare for its replacement so this is the armature um, is faulty as well, so we're going to find out as we move on. This is the bond coil. This is the bond bond coil. I've extracted it from the entire stator, so um, this is it. It's clearly bond, and these are the two legs. These two legs are connected to the yellow color wire. Okay, so it feeds AC voltage to the input of an evr so this is the function of these two wires so this um these are the exciter cables and this is the coil that extends to that terminal so the next thing i do is to count the original number of tons of the exciter coil okay so i like to be accurate and work just in line with the um, manufacturer's you know uh, specification so um it, it works best for me so i just took my time to count the number of tons of this bond exciter coil i think it was um 70 70 tons okay now the next thing to do is to clean up the slots the slots where we detach the um, exciter winding then um, insulate it with a press pan with a glass press pan okay so this these are the exciter wires the, the bad coil has um, been removed so this is an this is an insulation press pan so i'm going to be um, fitting it into the slot where i removed the bond coil so the insulation is to avoid any physical contact between the windings the coil rather and the um, lamination the stator lamination so you insulate it properly before laying the new coil this should be done neatly so that um, the work will be easier for you so you you insulate the slots properly and then you cut your press pan neatly okay after taking measurements i prepare the new coil so this is a kind of local setup um i have 70 tons here when you must have uh, completed the number of tons you carefully remove the nails and then detach the new coil so you need to be very careful while doing this so that you don't you don't scratch or wound the new coil okay so you do this carefully
now with the new coil we have prepared i'm going to be replacing it just the same position the original position of the bond coil so this is how it's done now after laying the coil you need to cover the slot with a press pan so you cut a perfect size of press pan and then cover the um, coil properly The same thing we did to this side, we're going to be repeating it on the other side. After slotting in, you cover with an insulating press pan. now after slotting in the new coil we'll be left with two coil terminals two coil terminals the two coil terminals are the exciter terminals so no particular order just take one to one leg of the exciter uh, wire then the second to the other leg of the exciter wire just as simple as that as I explained earlier, these two yellow wires, they are our exciter wires, okay? So they feed the AC inputs of our AVR. So this is it right here, okay? So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to test for continuity, provided your connection um, is correct. So your uh, digital multimeter should give some continuity readings when you test the exciter terminals so as you can see on the digital multimeter we have some continuity readings which means our connection is okay our connection is okay it has been restored all right then after this stage you tie up the coil you know you arrange the coil properly and then with a bracing rope you tie it up firmly and neatly. So this is it guys. The bottom of our stator has been perfectly arranged and tied up. Now, I will call it on the top side down to take care of the top. To take care of the top, so you can see how neatly um, the job is done. So, I will equally do the same thing to the top. So, you um, insulate it properly, you separate the coil sets. This is our exciter coil. We're going to be separating it from the mains winding. With the use of a press pan so after the um, isolation you tie it up as well and you can see what it looks like so this is the, the top of our coil it has been properly you know tied up and held together so this is the exciter coil we replaced so the exciter terminals so this is just the coil as neat as it is this armature is equally badly burnt as you can see on the screen so i'll be removing it uh, with the aid of a sharp chisel originally is a 25 gauge copper coil so i'm going to be replacing it with aluminium according to the um, client's description so he wants a cheaper job and wants me to do it with aluminium so the original coil is 25 gauge copper so i'll be replacing it with aluminium if you want the um, size of aluminium suitable for this job 
drop it in the comment section i will be there to respond to you okay so this is it i'm going to be uh, removing the other side of the armature coil as well So the armature was badly burnt, the plastic insulation, it was almost completely burnt. So I'm going to be dressing this armature properly. You need to dress it carefully using a press pan to avoid earth leakage. To avoid earth leakage, you must dress it properly with a very thick press pan. You dress the slots, dress the top and bottom so that on no condition will your coil have any contact with the um, lamination with the amateur lamination i've carefully dressed this um pool so i've dressed it carefully and neatly as well so i'll be rewinding this very pool after which i equally dress the second pool and rewind as well so the coil was divided into two one per pool once again, if you want to know the correct gauge of this aluminum replacement for a copper coil, let me know at the comment section. I will be there to provide you the answer. So if you look at this, it's been neatly and carefully dressed to avoid any kind of contact between your coil and the 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 core the lamination core as you can see this is aluminium this is not copper so one side has been um, rewinded uh, you can see how neat it is with aluminium so i'm going to be rewinding the second pool as well <laughs> 